My next paddle adventure takes me to one of my favorite lakes for kayaking, Beaver Lake, in Washington State in the Pacific Northwest, just 30 minutes drive east of Seattle. Beaver Lake is on the southeastern side of Sammamish. Beaver Lake is actually a set of three lakes in the shape of a beaver. The South Lake, also known as Long Lake, is the tail. Beaver Lake, or the main lake, is the body of the beaver, and the North Lake is the head of the beaver. The tail and head lakes are joined to the main lake with small connector waterways I'll paddle through. Well, it's a beautiful winter day at Beaver Lake in Sammamish, Washington. And the temperature is about 50 Fahrenheit. Uh, very light wind, maybe one knot. Uh, lake is completely full and we've got a little bit of blue sky showing which is quite a, a privilege this time of year. Any day that's not raining in January in Seattle is a great day. And uh, just launched at the boat ramp opposite the main lodge, the main beach. Uh, you do need a Discover Pass to launch there. Pretty quiet today, only three other cars and so I look forward to a nice peaceful relaxing paddle on the lake. I'm going to go first to the North Lake and then I'll loop back past the lodge and I'll go to the South Lake. One of the interesting things about this paddle is uh, it's actually, it's called Beaver's Lake, but there's actually three lakes. The North Lake, the Main Lake and the South Lake. The South Lake is also called Long Lake and there's sort of hidden connectors between them. I'll show you where those are. I'm using the new Insta360 X3 camera today, shooting in 5.3K, 30 frames per second. And I've got it mounted just, just in front of the cockpit of the kayak on the invisible selfie stick. The camera's about an eye height, uh, but I'll, I'll extend it higher later so you can get a view behind the kayak as well. The water temperature today is probably in the upper 30s or the lower 40s uh, Fahrenheit, which is why I'm wearing a wetsuit today and a paddle jacket. Uh, but it's actually not terribly cold, especially because there's no wind blowing and we're in the trees here, so it's very sheltered. So there's, there's no wind uh, chill effect to speak of. And so I actually don't want to wear a hat right now. Um, there's a real risk of overheating with the gear I have on. This is the first time I've shot video using the Insta360 X3. Uh, usually I do the GoPros, one on the back of the kayak and one just in front of the cockpit. One facing backwards, one facing forwards. Uh, one of the cool things about the 360 is it's taking video on all sides at the same time. So I'll release this in both uh, reframed, so the regular YouTube format as well as 360 format for those that want to pan around and see the full view and uh, if you have VR goggles or something like that you can get the full experience. I did also get the Rode Wireless uh, Go to microphones uh, but I don't yet have the mount for that to put them on the X3 so I'm hoping the audio is okay. The X3 is about a foot and a half from my face so it should be fairly good audio and there's very little wind so there should be almost no wind noise and there's not much ambient noise either so there should be very little noise of any kind so hopefully the voice is coming through well. Okay we're approaching the top of the lake there and see if you could see the connector I'll give you a hint it's not quite straight ahead a little bit to the left 
it's really hidden. You wouldn't know it's there unless you saw somebody going in or coming out of it. But I'll show you where it is today. Okay, so before we go in the connector to the North Lake, let's just do a lap around the top end of the main lake. Uh, some of you may notice I don't have my spray skirt on. Uh, there's no waves here, there's no wind. Uh, there's no power boats bombing around. You can get fishing boats and I think they can use electric motors, but um, very, very low speed restrictions. So there's essentially no wind, no waves. I do carry a spray skirt with me along with all kinds of other safety gear, uh, just in case. Most people, when I'm paddling in bigger lakes and in the sea, uh, really important to be prepared. I also tend to paddle pretty close to the shore. That's where the, all the interesting stuff to see is anyway. Uh, looks like there's a cormorant on this dock here. Let's go check them out. Okay, you can almost see the connector now, if you look to the left. But we'll scoot around there after we've done the north end of the lake. What I love about this lake is just the, the peacefulness of it. Uh, very calm water paddling, uh, sheltered by the trees. So even if, if there is a little bit of wind, you rarely see it or feel it here. And it's a combination of beautiful waterfront properties and forests and the North and South Lake are actually quite uh, minimally developed, so there's quite a bit of nature to be seen. Uh, it's very common to see all different kinds of birds, uh, turtles even. I'm not fishing, uh, but I'm told that this lake is stocked, and I often do see fishermen in the lake. So for those fishermen out there, uh, it's a great place to fish as well, I'm told. Lots of ducks around the lake. Pretty timid. Don't let you get too close. Those ones took off at about 50 yards. Um, mostly mallards, some buffleheads, and other kinds. Uh, never seen wood ducks here, but have seen them in the broader Sammamish area. Uh, that's one of my favorite kinds of ducks. Really colorful. Probably second only to the mandarin duck, uh, which you don't really see around here, at least not natively. Okay, you can start to see the connector straight up ahead. And it's pretty narrow. Uh, this time of the year, it should be easy to get through because the lake level is very high. And it's winter, so there shouldn't be too much vegetation, like lilies and whatnot. But I'm told for people that come late in the season when the lake level is lower, and there's a lot of more vegetation on the surface of the water, like lilies. And, you know, growing in from the sides, it can be a bit tricky to get through here and on the south connector, which I'll show you a little bit later. After doing the north lake here, we'll loop back and do the south lake and check that out. I had the invisible selfie stick used for the 360 camera mount extended to enable a look around, and here I'm shortening it back down so the camera is at about head height. It's pretty amazing how the camera just deletes the stick from the final video.
So let me know what you think of this uh, Insta360 X3 video. Um, it's shooting the whole sphere of video at 5.3K and 30 frames per second. So it's, it's really cool, I think, in that you're getting the entire sphere. And, you know, at Presence Videography, we're going for that concept of presence, helping you to feel like you're there and in the moment. And so I think the 360 lends itself well to that. That said, uh, the sort of pixel resolution, if you compare it to the GoPro shooting at 5, 3, 30 frames a second, you know, it's not going to be quite as high. But I always wonder, like, how many people are looking at these videos on smartphones or even web browsers um, and they're not getting the 4K version anyway. If you leave it on auto, YouTube is usually selecting a lower resolution. You have to explicitly select 4K to see 4K. So I'm curious to know, what do you guys think of this 360 video? Do you like the resolution? Do you like the, the new types of video shots you can get with a 360? And one of my aims is to also release the actual 360 video. So those that want to pan around with their smartphone or their mouse, to see other parts of what I'm filming, uh, or those that have VR headsets should be able to get the full experience. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Uh, it's really great to get out on the lake. Uh, it's uh, few and far between the kayaking opportunities in the Pacific Northwest this time of year. The weather can be testy. We've had ice storms, we've had snow storms, a lot of rain storms, and having a, a clear day like this at least no rain and even some blue sky is just awesome uh, so we got to take those opportunities when we get them and even though it's fairly cool uh, it's about 50 degrees fahrenheit uh, not too cold at all but it's fairly cool um, just with the right gear you can get out and really enjoy it So the way I have the Insta360 mounted to the kayak is I just use the uh, regular GoPro clip uh, base, uh, stuck it onto the deck of the kayak with some double-sided industrial tape, and uh, then I put the Ulanzi magnetic mount to that uh, so I can really quickly release the selfie stick and camera from the deck. Uh, let's say, for example, if I want to do a a panning shot. And then really easy to clip it back into the Ulanzi mount uh, after done. So I like that simplicity. One of the other things that I like about this Insta360 is it has uh, stabilization. Um, the mounting that I have onto the deck of the kayak is fairly rigid. I purposely mounted it right uh, near the cockpit where there's a lip uh, rather than a deck somewhere else uh, which tends to flex a lot and it makes the you know, the selfie stick wobble. Um, this is a pretty rigid mounting, and so uh, the kayak, it's its very stable. There is a little bit of movement side to side in the, the selfie stick, but, you know, with the video stabilization, it should be almost not noticeable if you're looking at the horizon. If you actually look at the kayak, you may see that 
wobble manifesting in the kayak. You may see the kayak wobbling a little bit below the camera. Um, in reality, it's not the kayak that's wobbling, it's the selfie stick, it's the artifact of the stabilization. Um, but the other cool thing about this camera is it has the horizon leveling, uh, which should be very, very useful and should minimize the, the edits uh, in the video editing process. And of course, uh, for those viewers that don't like the rocking sort of paddling or wave motion, uh, this is a really nice feature, this horizon leveling. Okay, so a really nice drink to have on a cold winter day when you're kayaking is Bailey's uh, with a little bit of, um, with hot water. So this is probably only about 20% Bailey's and the rest hot water, but I think hot chocolate, but a power hot chocolate, sort of adult version of hot chocolate. Oh, it's really fantastic on a, on a cool day when you're kayaking, it warms you right up. Okay, so back through the connector. I'll lengthen the selfie stick here so you can get a panoramic view. And I'll just kind of drift through here. You might see the wobble in the selfie stick a little bit more here. Um, at least the kayak may be wobbling a little bit with respect to the camera. But with the stabilization, you're probably not seeing it in the, in the view. So this is a really nice lake for all levels of paddlers. Uh, if you um, are just beginning, uh, you need to figure out how to get a kayak. Um, there's no rentals here, um, but as long as you can get a kayak of your own or borrow one, um, you can launch at the boat launch. You just need a Discover Pass for parking there, or uh, you can park at the main lodge and launch off the main beach there, if you don't mind carrying, or if you have a kayak cart. That's always an option. I do have a kayak cart, I always take it with me, just because you never know when you're not going to be able to get close to the boat ramp, and um, those things are fantastic. I mean, you can easily go for a quarter mile and, and pull that thing instead of carrying the kayak, which can be a real backbreaker. So this area in the forest here, I think this is uh, Beaver Lake Preserve. Not sure why the seagulls are hanging out here, but... We're a bit of a far away from the sea, at least a, a half hour's drive from here. So just a slight wind coming up now, a little bit of a headwind, uh, probably about two or three knots, and really quite pleasant actually with the, the wind chill from that slight breeze, it's just the right temperature where I'm not getting too hot. So really perfect day for paddling today.
Hey, how's the fishing today? Just one bite. Is it uh, trout you're looking for? Yeah. Okay, good luck. Wow, looks like this dock up ahead needs some TLC. We have had some pretty ferocious storms lately. Uh, gone up to 50 or 60 mile an hour gusts. A lot of trees down around here, so. Maybe that was a casualty, although it looks like it's been like that for quite a long time. This lake is also really great for paddleboarding because it's so flat and calm and sheltered from the wind. I mean now I'm only feeling two to three knots even though I bet you above the treetops it's blowing harder than that. And so it really lends itself well to both kayaking and paddleboarding, probably canoeing as well. And kayaks, canoes, paddleboards can easily get to the North Lake and the South Lake connector to the south lake which I'll show you in a moment is probably the smallest connector and you really need a shallow draft to get through there and it's best to do that one in the winter or the spring sort of late summer fall with the lake level low and more lilies vegetation um, it's harder to get through the, the south lake connector and even if you do get through it the south lake which is also known as long lake um, typically has a lot of lilies on it so it's pretty hard to paddle around there, late summer, fall. And we're just coming up for the, the main beach area. And as we go past, you'll see the lodge behind it. Great place to swim in the summer. A lot of fishing off this beach though, so if you do come and swim here, your kids swim here. Make sure they wear water shoes. You don't want to get a hook in your feet. A lot of fishing lines out today. A little bit tricky paddling along the shore. You want to try to avoid those fishing lines. For the most part, they're pretty visible. Hi, how's it fishing today? Yeah. Catch anything? Not yet. I talked to a guy out in the lake. He said he's not getting many bites either. Yeah, this time, this time the air is a little slow. Good luck. Yeah, I guess with the colder temperatures, the fish aren't quite as active, probably not quite as hungry, not quite as interested in biting. All right, we're just coming up for the, the South Lake, the Long Lake connector. Uh, you can see that lawn there straight ahead. It's literally up against that lawn, just behind those bushes to the right. And again, this is, should be very doable this time of year, but I'm gonna lower the selfie stick just cause sometimes the overhead branches get a little bit low. I'd rather not uh, get the camera caught up. And it's pretty helpful having the rudder to get through here. For maneuverability. But yeah, looks like it's easy to get through today. Uh, actually, on second thought, it's probably a little tricky to get through here on a paddleboard, at least in a standing position. You probably need to sit down on the paddleboard to get through this section. But otherwise, it should be quite doable. I've got probably a foot and a half, maybe two feet uh, draft below my kayak, so 
maybe not something you want to take a power boat through, but for a larger boat. But kayaks, paddle boards, canoes, this is perfect. Or even floaties. This lake is usually quite nice for spotting uh, birds and turtles around the perimeter. So let's see what we can find. There's also some nice hikes around uh, Beaver Lake. And just there around the, the front right of the kayak is uh, one of the hikes goes right past there. Uh, this little sort of outlet here is, I believe this is Laughing Jacob's Creek. Uh, I think that's the outflow to the, the lake. It takes it down to Lake Sammamish. Uh, the, the inflow to Lake Sammamish is just near the boat launch at Lake Sammamish State Park, just to the right of the boat launch, which I've paddled right past on my kayak adventures there. This lake is kind of a special place. Uh, it was one of the very first places I did a kayak video. If you look on our channel, um, one of the earliest videos I did was uh, Beaver Lake. Uh, we're shooting at that point just, I think, with a single GoPro and my, my uh, smartphone. Uh, sort of technique has evolved a lot since then and uh, pretty cool to be trying out this 360 camera. Not seeing too many turtles or birds up at this end of the, the long lake. I guess being in the middle of winter they're pretty docile, probably sheltering somewhere keeping warm. You often see turtles lined up on this log up ahead but nothing to see today. One of the things I love about kayaking is just being able to get into really shallow areas like this. I mean, it's literally only about a foot deep here, and you can get into these super shallow areas and see things that you just wouldn't see, certainly on foot, but even on bigger boats, you can't get in like this. So I usually follow the keto diet, so super low carb, and I've just found it incredible in terms of improving all my health markers and dropped like 40 pounds. Uh, it's been fantastic getting me more trim for kayaking, um, able to go further, longer, harder. Um, but one of the things uh, I realized with kayaking is sometimes you can get a pretty intense demand on your energy levels if you've got a wind against you or waves or you know, you're paddling in a current, and so it's good to have some high energy foods and drinks with you, and that's why I don't mind breaking the rule and doing the, the Bailey's, hot Bailey's uh, drink, because I'm pretty much burning off all those calories as I drink them, and it's keeping me warm along the way, which is awesome. If you uh, are interested in looking more into keto and fasting and all that stuff, uh, I recommend check out Dr. Berg, B-E-R-G, on the internet. Just search for Dr. Berg, uh, Keto Getting Started. Uh, he has tons of YouTube videos, uh, really highly recommended. Uh, he's not sponsoring this channel. Uh, we're not affiliated in any way. I can just tell you from personal experience, I've had a fantastic experience following his advice, so I highly recommend it. This is quite a beautiful area up ahead with these reeds, uh, especially in the summer, uh, spring, if you can get through here. Spring is usually fine. Uh, often see different kinds of bird life. The red-winged blackbird is known to hang out in these, these kinds of reeds. 
may not see them today, but oh, it's nice to see that Beaver Lake left some of the natural setting. They didn't just develop every square inch, which is awesome. This area to the left of me with the trees is, is part of the sort of Beaver Lake Park, so that will never be developed. And it's also really nice to hike around. And you can see the, the connector there, straight ahead. See my bubble trail from this morning, so just gives you an indication of how tranquil the water is and very little wind to speak of. Uh, but my bubble trail is still where I left it. Uh, again, one of the strengths of Beaver Lake is just the, the calm and shelter. So really great for all levels of paddlers. And uh, especially in winter, you know, you can get pretty ferocious uh, weather. And just having that extra shelter with the trees, being able to explore the three lakes through the connectors, seeing a bit of nature, that's a really nice place for winter paddle. And I am going to make my way over to the boat launch shortly. I'm just going to do a loop around the south end of the lake here. Uh, some neat houses down here. Probably to get around all three of these lakes, like I have going around the perimeter. You could easily do it in an hour if you were paddling fairly hard. And, uh, but, you know, relaxed paddle. Especially if you're doing a little bit of fishing, uh, probably want to budget maybe a half day for this. A full day if you're a pretty hardcore fisherman. Uh, especially if the fish aren't biting, as they aren't today. You've got to be prepared to hang out and persevere. A lot of ducks down this side of the lake. Ducks and cormorants. So Beaver Lake is, uh, it's just about half an hour uh, east of Seattle. Uh, it's just to the, just to the east of Lake Sammamish which in turn is just to the east of Lake Washington, which is in turn just to the east of Seattle. So it goes Puget Sound, you know, from the west to the east. Puget Sound, Lake Washington, Lake Sammamish, Beaver Lake. Beaver Lake is, of course, tiny compared to Lake Sammamish, which is in turn pretty tiny compared to Lake Washington. This paddle jacket is really warm. It's perfect for these conditions. Oh, wow. Is that a real heron? I think it is. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's a real heron. Wow, he's really beautiful. A lot of these people have fake birds on their docks. So it's hard to tell. But that's definitely a real heron. Thanks for watching. We'd love your support if you want to give us a thumbs up. Check out our channel for other great kayaking, biking, and hiking adventures in the Pacific Northwest. We have some amazing trips planned for the coming year. Subscribe and you'll be notified as we release new videos. Let us know what you think of this uh, video shot with the Insta360 X3. Leave a comment. Happy kayaking. Bye for now.